What's up, YouTube? Pink Reaper here, back with another just quick, random ass video of uh, Pokemon. So, uh, this is like one of literally only two games I've played tonight. Um, but I thought I'd just throw it up anyway, just to sort of like um, not really like show off anything or anything interesting. This is a Gen 7 OU game with just like, a, you know, fucking annoying ass team that I'm running. Um, <laughs> I've also decayed a lot. Uh, my rating is uh, not 1561 anymore. It's gone up after this game. Uh, this dude over here, 1758. I was just under 1700 uh, rating when I last played, and then I decayed a lot, but luckily I still got, you know, a high-level player. So you, I, I just... I, I want to point that out specifically that he is a, like... You know, he's a better player. This isn't someone, like, low ladder, like, 1500s, like where I'm at. Um, this is someone who knows what they're doing. But uh, this game is sort of like a good sort of showing of what happens when you get tilted. Um, so uh, just to run off the run off the bat real quick. Um, so my team here is uh, Mega Scissor, obviously. Uh, SD Knockoff Bullet Punch Roost. It's my favorite scissor set to run. Um, uh, this is Volcarona. This is not bulky Volcarona at all. This is max speed. Um... This is Max Speed, Bug Buzz, Flamethrower, I think, instead of Fire Blast. I actually don't remember. Um, <laughs> it's been a few minutes, I guess, since I played this game. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so it's Bug Buzz, Flamethrower, or Fire Blast, whatever. Bug Buzz, Fire Move, HP Ground. Because uh, my team, like, my team's not necessarily weak to Heatran, but you just kind of want to have that option for Heatran. And it's also good for other things. Um, I almost considered actually changing it to HP Rock just for other fucking Volcaronas, but, um, whatever. Um, uh, and then obviously Quiver Dance. This is, uh, Choice Scarf. This is a really weird Choice Scarf, um, um, Tapu Koko. I blanked on the name there for a second, sorry. Uh, it's Brave Bird, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Defog. Um, Brave Bird is specifically so, um, it's specifically so I can hit, like, certain fi uh, fighting types that I'd otherwise have issues with, um, and, like, it it's good for, it's good for, um, it's good for, uh, what's his name right here, Kamo'o, without having to, like, lock myself into, um, into Dazzling Gleam, um, I don't like running Dazzling Gleam on this set. Uh, it's also good for just, like, a bunch of random other stuff. Like, I like being able to deal, like, the extra damage to... For one, it's really good to be able to hit um, Volcarona. Like, um, that's the that's the main reason I put it on there, but there's other stuff it hits. Um, this is Life Orb, Stealth Rocks, um, Garchomp, Max Speed, uh, Max Speed, Jolly, uh, Dragon Claw, Earthquake, Stealth Rocks, and Hidden Power, Ice. It just... Don't, don't ask. Um, I have Ayapapa, um, Volt Switch, Will-O-Wisp, Hydro Pump, uh, Defog, Rotom Wash as well. I have double Defoggers. That's to really just help, um, Volcarona, obviously. Um, Volcarona's an incredibly powerful Pokemon. Um, if it gets set up, like, if it gets to plus two, there's not really much in the metagame that can deal with it. Like, at that point, you just kind of win. So, um... And then I have Electric Seed, uh, Halucha. Again, this is another Mon that's just, like, way too powerful in Gen 7. Um, you get the plus one defense, which makes it easy to set up on certain things. Like, um, like this, this Landorus right here wouldn't have a good way of dealing with, like, I don't even know what Lando it is, but it doesn't matter. Unless it's Explosion, it doesn't have a good way of dealing with Halucha, and Halucha can just SD. Um, I'm Acrobatics, High Jump Kick, Drain Punch. Um... I don't have a coverage move outside of Stab. Um, I prefer Drain Punch to having a coverage move. I actually, I actually prefer Drain Punch as my main way of sweeping, like get plus two and start clicking Drain Punch and Acrobatics, and High Jump Kick is just there to like, like if if, if it's like offensive Magirna or if it's like bulky Magirna that's taking some chip, um, plus two High Jump Kick, just make sure it's dead and risk you know, just losing your Halucha because high jump kick is that move. Um, 
looking at my opponent's team, uh, when we started, I'm like, okay, so that's uh, that's Mega Gera, obviously. He has no other Mega options, and there's no reason not to make it Mega. Um, he's got the same Kamo uh, Halucha combo I have, just because everyone does. That's Electric Seed. Um, I didn't know. I, I don't know exactly what Kamo set you'd be running, or Kamo, uh, Tapu Koko. Sorry. I don't know what Tapu Koko set you'd be running on this. Um, looking at it, it might be Scarf, just because um, he doesn't have a fast Mon outside of um, Halucha, and then if Halucha dies, he just has nothing to out. Like he doesn't have a single Mon that outspeeds um, like Mega Low Punny, for instance. Um, so things like that. Um, it's either going to be Z Kamo'o or Z um, Magirna. Uh, I didn't know, obviously, at the beginning of the, the battle. Uh, it's If it's Z Magirna, it's probably DD. Um, it's probably DD Kamo'o. Um, and then if it's Z Kamo'o, it's more than likely um, either like Calm Mind or Assault Vest uh, Magirna. Uh, Magirna can run, like, this is a very offensive team, but Magirna can run sort of any set anyways. Like, you can just put a Magirna on an offensive team and run it however you want and it'll work. Magirna's so good. Um, and then this is, this is more than likely, uh, like, Rocks Lando. Uh, it could also theoretically have been Rocks uh, Kamo'o, but on this style of team, it seems unlikely. And even if it has Rocks, it's still probably set up. Um, so, I lead... Um, I lead Garchomp just because, like, it's a good lead. Um, it deals well with the things that he's most likely to lead with, which is to say Lando or Tapu Koko. Um, it's because it's if it's like Life Orb Dazzling or Life Orb um, Life Orb um, HP Ice, that sucks. Um, but it's not like the worst. Uh, especially because I do have, you know, I, I have an offensive scissor there in the back. Um, but he leads with Lando. We uh, we start by trading rocks. Um, I I clicked rocks here. I I clicked rocks here, even though I didn't really need it. Rocks isn't super useful against his team. Uh, it, I mean, it, it does good chip to Halucha and Tapu Koko, and very good chip to obviously Gyarados. But other than that, it's not super important. But the reason I did it. Uh, was because this was probably my only turn to click rocks, and I wanted to see if I was faster than Lando. Since I'm faster than Lando, obviously this isn't some weird Scarf Rock set, which is very... There's Scarf Rocks and there's Scarf Defog in Gen 7. Don't ask about it. Um, so, uh, knowing that this is probably like a slightly bulkier Lando, um, Hidden Power, Ice, Earthquake, U-Turn, the very... Uh, the, uh, the common set. Um... So, I reveal Hidden Power Ice, Life Orb. Um, this is uninvested. Um, I don't even think... I think I'm actually minus Special Attack Nature as well. Um, but look at how much damage that does. Like, that does so much damage. Um, which is great, because now Lando's... Like, Lando's dead. Lando can't do anything. At this range, I can just click Brave Bird with Tapu Koko and it'll die. Um, like, Lando's out of the game. It's, uh, it's slower than... Four of my mons, it can't like scissor has priority, and I mean, what's it gonna do to run them? So, uh, good thing, thing there. He actually clicks EQ here and deals way more damage than I would have thought, though. So I'm like, oh, this is offensive Lando. So it's offensive Rock. So it's gonna be EQ Stone Edge, and then um, its fourth move can kind of depend. Um, in my mind, I was thinking it might also even be. Um, it might also even be, uh, like, Z, but I'm like, no, actually, more than likely what it is is it's Focus Sash Explosion, and it's, like, a dedicated lead, but whatever. Uh, so I make a hard read here, um, and EQ on the switch. Now, this is, this is the entire point of the video, basically. This is what I want to start talking about, like, why I'm uploading this at all. Um, so my opponent, as I pointed out, he's not a bad player, um, but he gets really tilted here. Um, the rest of this video almost doesn't matter. Um, so, no one obviously is going to expect in their right mind that anyone's running HP Ice Garchomp. So, I'm running Max Speed Life Orb HP Ice Garchomp. I nearly killed that Landorus. He had to switch. That much was obvious. Um, when I was looking at his team and when I was trying to decide what to click, and trust me, I actually decided really fast. 
I was like, there's no way he's going to anything other than Tapu Koko or Magirna on the Switch. He wanted to keep Lando because if he kept Lando, he keeps an electric immunity. That's incredibly important. If he doesn't have Lando, anytime Tapu Koko comes in, it clicks Volt Switch for free. There's nothing that can be done about it. Um, this is a, this is like a, um, this is like sort of, I don't know if I want to call it like a high level, level Pokemon thing. It's more like a mid level. Like it's, it's sort of like the, if you're going to be competitive and you're going to want to like get good at the game, this is sort of, this is the kind of thing you have to think of. These are the kind of thoughts you have to have. Um, if I don't have Lando, I don't have an electric community and my opponent has Tapu Koko. That's really, so it's really important. Um, even if he's just saving it so that, like, if he sacks some, if he loses something else to Tapu Koko, if I click Thunderbolt, he has something that comes in and can just threaten it out, essentially. Uh, that's assuming, obviously, that Tapu is choice. Most Tapus in Gen 7 actually are choice. Most Kokos, I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, although maybe it's actually true to say most Tapus. Um, most, most Kokos in Gen 7 are choice, and in fact, Scarf has become a lot more popular alongside um, Palucha. Um, so, it was really obvious that he's going to switch to, um, he was going to switch out there. Now, the reason I didn't HP Ice, which was safe, because even if he didn't switch, obviously it would still work, and the reason I didn't, um, didn't Dragon Claw is because I was actually certain that Tapu Koko was the Mon was coming in, that was coming in. I wasn't even quite questioning it. I was a hundred percent sure. Um, now that sounds kind of weird, but the mentality that he would have is the moves I should theoretically go for, having clicked Stealth Rocks and Hidden Power, I should probably go for a Dragon Claw against his, um, against his, uh, Landris. Because it kills Lando, and it, it super effectively obviously hits, uh, Kamo, -oh, even though Kamo -oh is most likely not going to try and come in on a hidden power ice anyway. It's stronger still against, even at minus one and with the defense boost, it's probably still stronger against Halucha. Um, but more importantly, it's also stronger against Gyarados. And if that's Intimidate Gyarados, um, or hidden power ice is stronger against Gyarados. Um, but if it's Intimidate Gyarados and Gyarados comes in, HP Ice isn't going to do really anything to, to Gyarados. And if it's Intimidate Gyarados, at minus two, Dragon Claw is also not going to do much to Gyarados. Um, he was very likely predicting me to um, try and Dragon Claw on the Switch into like something obvious, basically. Um, like, this is really hard to explain. So his... His thought process is, I'm going to predict Gyarados coming in and Dragon Claw, uh, because it's the most damage I would get off. It'll do more than Hidden Power Ice, although it'll still do very little. Um, but then he gets a free switch into Gyarados, and uh, not a free switch into Gyarados, but then he gets a switch into Gyarados. And then if it's, if it's, um, if it is Intimidate Gyarados and it Mega Evolves and gets a Dragon Dance off, I kind of lose, um, because... I can't switch directly into uh, Halucha at that point. It's too dangerous. If, if Lucha dies, I just lose. Um, but then he's safe to Dragon Dance again. Or, I mean, I can't switch... I can't go... I can't switch straight into Tapu Koko at that point. Because if he Dragon Dances again, I just lose. Um, his... His, um... His, a plus two Gyarados would absolutely outspeed a... Uh, um, plus two Tapu Koko. Um... And it just, like, it, it means I would have to essentially, um, like, the only way to, the only way to deal with plus two Gyarados is Tapu Koko into Halucha, which means I have to sack something, and I think in his mind, he was, he was expecting me to not want that to happen because of how strong Gyarados on his team is against my team. I didn't actually mention this at the beginning of the, ga the game, but Gyarados, from the outside looking in, is extremely threatening to my team. Um, if it's like, if it's like DD... Um, if it's like DDEQ, uh, it can deal an, un an incredible amount of damage to, uh, even to max defense Rotom Wash. Um, so there's just like, I, I honestly think like his thought process was here, here was he was expecting me to, uh, either HP Ice on the Lando or a Dragon Claw on the Gyarados. Um, but I like literally the second I, uh, the second I saw him take 76% from Hidden Power Ice, 
my I dude I clicked earthquake as fast as you could because I was like in my mind I'm like he's going to Magirna or he's going to he's going to Tapu Koko he's trying to get in something that either can eat the HP ice or something that can um like he's trying to bring in something that can eat, eat the HP ice and he's trying he's gonna try and force Garchomp out the only thing the only thing he has then is Tapu Koko it's something that's faster so I'm like I'm clicking EQ 100% of the time um so that's a long sort of explanation for how we got into this situation where his Tapu Koko is just dead. Minus one EQ still kills. Um, the reason for all of that, and the reason I, I needed to explain all of that, is my opponent gets tilted extremely hard right here. And because he gets tilted so hard, he essentially loses the game. Like, right on this turn. Um, he goes into Halucha, the only thing remaining on his team that's faster than Garchomp. And I actually could have saved Garchomp here. I could have saved Garchomp and just switch to um switch to rotom um because rotom would take a I, I think rotom would actually take a plus two high jump kick uh haluch is not as strong as you think it is um <laughs> i know i'm i know i'm saying that like gyarados plus one gyarados is more threatening to rotom wash than plus two haluch high jump kick but it is i'm sorry um like i don't know luch is just not strong um uh although since the the thing now is to run it adamant with like 335 speed to um um uh, or not 335 speed but like uh 331 speed to outspeed plus one lotties like plus plus one uh base 110s um or not i'm sorry not to outspeed plus one base 110s to outspeed all base 110s even when you're not at plus one um it is a it is quite a bit stronger but um, I actually clicked Hidden Power Ice here in case he stayed in. Um, Hidden Power Ice would probably be enough to two-hit KO it. Um, but it would also, like, it, it just meant, like, he had to, it, like, I was I was putting him in a position where he had to attack. Uh, so he just goes for Acrobatics, uh, takes the rough skin damage. Um, I go into Scissor. At this point, like, his team already, like, is in huge trouble. Um, he... He can't really do much to this scissor without uh, without a boost. Uh, HJK is probably would probably do about thirty to forty percent. Um, scissor is just really strong. Uh, but the other thing is, Mega Scissor has a tendency to be um, has a tendency to be uh, bulkier than what I'm running in Gen Seven. Like I'm running max HP, max attack, and that's it. But a lot of people have a tendency to run like one twenty, like max HP. Uh, 12 defense impish with max special defense like it's it like this weird like super bulky spread to try and survive as much as possible um he goes for the he goes for the uh um the swords dance here i actually 100 percent expected him to go for swords dance here um even if he didn't it wouldn't have actually been that big of a deal but i also went for swords dance here um because i'm max attack uh, even the plus one defense, like, it, 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 it doesn't matter. Like, if I had just bullet punched twice here, he would have also died, and I'd still take no damage. Um, but, I, I mean, I didn't, obviously. I, I just, um, I just went for, I went for the sword dance on what I was expecting him to go for a sword dance. He kind of had to go there. He had to sort of hope I would choke. Um, he, like, he had to hope I wasn't swords dance, or he had to hope, so, like, any of that kind of stuff, because, I mean, he's already so far behind at this point. Um, that said, he, like, even at plus two, he couldn't kill Top of Coco, but, um, so in comes Mag, um, I don't know what set this is, it could be, like, Z, Phytinium Z, or stuff like that, I, I still, I'm not sure, but, um, I can't let it get, like, if it's set up, like, if it's shift gear or anything like that, I can't get, like, a free set up, just because that could be bad, um, I go, plus I'm, you know, plus two scissor, he goes for Thunderbolt here, just 46, which is a lot, he's actually turns out to be, um, lefties which makes me think he probably is like he's probably like shift gear calm mind like he's double double dance um with with bolt beam uh the all the other all alternative is just he's straight calm mind or straight um uh shift gear with like fairy stab plus bolt beam um but seeing that i, I realize at this point okay so that's a hundred percent um that's a hundred percent z kamoo um I just go for two bullet punches here. Now, I actually didn't have to. Um, the 
the Thunderbolt doing 46 was only because the electric terrain is up. Without electric terrain, the um, that Thunderbolt would have done quite a bit less damage. Um, the next Thunderbolt probably would have only done about 30%, I want to say. Um, so if I wanted to, like, he wasn't going to kill. I could have roosted. I could have just roosted twice here, and um, there wouldn't have been much he could have done about it. Um, the thing is, he would have definitely gone to Lando at that point, and the minus one was more what I was worried about. Um, like, if he goes to Lando there, and I go minus one, and then he doubles back into Mag um, on the bullet punch to sack it, um, he can then go back into Lando. I'd get... Um, I'd get... Um, intimidated again, I'd be back to neutral. I'd have to sort of, like... I'd sort of have to 50-50 uh, whether or not he was going back to ma Mag or not. Um, but I'm playing off the assumption that, like, no matter what, like, I'm at such a huge advantage that I can just click what's in front of me and I will win. Um, and my opponent is so tilted, he doesn't, like... Like, he, he doesn't have the option to make those sort of, like, plays. He literally can only hope I screw up. So in comes Kamoo. Okay, this could be Flamethrower Kamoo. I don't care, though. I'm going for Bullet Punch. It doesn't kill. Um, he goes for Clangor's Soul Blaze. Um, he obviously is, spe like, fully special. Um, because that did so much. Um, but because he didn't... Oh, shoutouts to... Shoutouts to uh, Silent Spectre. I forgot I had this song. Um, like... Every play he's making, he's making, like, he's playing off the assumption that I'm going to screw up somehow, basically. Like, he needs me to make a mistake. And the biggest mistake you can ever make in positions like this is letting your, like, not realizing that your opponent is so far behind. Um, because he's so far behind, he needs to be able to set something up and start dealing huge damage. So I'm just never going to let him set up. Always attack. Like, I'm in always attack mode. Like, that's how it is. Um... Uh, so he obviously, he gets the, the full setup. It doesn't matter. He dies. Um, now, the other thing is, I haven't revealed what my my last move was. So he was more than likely worried that I was going to click... Um, that I was going to click... Um, like a bug move. Like, I had a bug move to click, which I don't. I'm Swords Dance, Bullet Punch, and Knockout Bruce. Um, in comes Lando. He gets the minus one attack. I mean, that's obviously going to die again. I actually forgot that he was at a low enough percent that he couldn't switch in twice. Um, in comes Intimidate Gyarados. I was right. It is Intimidate. Um, generally, you always run Intimidate on um, Mega Mega Gera. Moxie's not worth it because even if you could get the kill, um, like, you want the Intimidate to give you better chances to, to set up. Uh, I don't... Uh, I don't go for an attack here. I actually switch out. Um... This is the one turn where I did, like, you know, I said everything's attack, attack, attack. But, again, um, I'm, I'm in the position where I, I, like, I can't lose unless I make the mis a misplay. And the misplay here would be to leave um, Scissor in. I'm at neutral. I don't have a good way of hitting it, and it would let him set up. Um, even if he attacks, even if he makes the right play here, he can't win. If he, if he water falls, if he earthquakes, whatever, um... My Tapu Koko dies, and then in comes Halucha. And Halucha will just kick, click HJK. Actually, I'd, I, honestly, in that position, I'd actually almost certainly kick, click Drain Punch. Because it will, even if it didn't kill, which it absolutely would not, uh, Gyarados is incredibly bulky, um, it would two-hit KO. He has no way of recovering. Uh, if he sets up, he still loses. Like, it's very important when you play Pokemon to to know what your win condition is um and to and because my opponent was so far back so early uh i knew my win condition immediately as once scissor came in was just click bullet punch that's all i needed to do um now if my opponent had if my opponent had made slightly better plays he probably could have gone gyarados earlier um the problem is, if he went to Gyarados earlier, he, he definitely needs, still needed to go to Lando before he went to Gyarados. He needed to get Scissor's attack decrease. Um, the main problem there, however, is that if to do that, he essentially has to sack Lando. So, and Scissor wouldn't have taken any real damage. Like, he didn't necessarily, like, misplay. He just, like, or, no, he did misplay, but, like, he was in the, he was in sort of the mindset that, like, I, 
I like I don't know what to do. Like he got so tilted by like weird shit, a max speed life orb, hidden power ice garchomp that like he just didn't see what his win conditions were. So if we were to switch this, um, and if we were to go back to turn four, um, not uh, not turn four. If, okay, so if we go here, where he he clicks. Um, he clicks Earthquake, I click Hidden Power. So, the correct play here more than likely would have been to sack Lando. Which, I know I, I said that early, like, if you're a big, if you're, if you're a, if, you know, if you're a quote-unquote good player or whatever, um, if you're, um, It, it, like you see, you see, you see your only electric immunity. You see, I have a Tapu Koko. If you lose your Lando, you just you don't have a like you don't have a um, you don't have a good switch. You you don't have a way to deal with that anymore, right? Um, but he should have seen early on that I'm already at minus one, and even though I am Life Orb, and even um, even though I'm Life Orb, uh, if this dies, he essentially gets a free switch into Gara. Gara comes in, Gara clicks. Um, Gara clicks Dragon Dance, like that kind of stuff. Um, like, he, he, his his hope from that, that point on would be like, Tapu Koko isn't Scarf or stuff like that. Something like that, right? But, um, actually, I, I, actually, I, I actually take that even further back. What his actual play should have been would be, assuming he has a move to hit this with Tapu Koko, um, he should have let this die, and then he should have gone hard Tapu Koko. Um, at that point... If he's choice Tapu Koko, which again, I don't know at this point, because I, I don't know what his Tapu Koko set is. Um, like, he, excuse me. If he's if he's choice, like, he's already kind of lost. Like, that's the problem. Like, he doesn't really have a good play against this Garchomp. Um, he doesn't know, obviously, that I'm Scarf Tapu Koko. It, it's more than likely. Um, I didn't know that he's Scarf Tapu Koko, but again, it's more than likely. Um... He should have just let this die, gone Tapu Koko, and tried to deal with my Garchomp. Now, I, in my position at that point, if he had done that, um, if I had actually HP iced here and then Tapu Koko comes in, um, my play almost certainly would have been to let Garchomp die as well. Uh, nothing on my team wants to take a hit from Tapu Koko in the same way that like nothing on his team wants to take a hit from Garchomp. Um, so his best play here, like this is this this is a situation where you want to deal with what's in front of you, um, and I, I I sort of understand the risk of switching directly into Coco Co Coco, but you should never make that the assumption that your opponent won't necessarily read that um, because if they do and that's your only good option, you've just lost your only good option. Um, that's the other thing about Pokemon, like you you have to sort of you sort of have to weigh what your your best options are against certain mods. Um, his best option against Garchomp, obviously, is Tapu Koko. Um, so letting Tapu Koko die would be a, like, well, it's Tapu Koko and it's um, it, it's Halucha. So if this if Tapu Koko dies and this Garchomp gets out, he doesn't have a great way again of dealing with this Garchomp. Um, he should. He should rather lose this Lando, which doesn't really necessarily help him out out, out much beyond the um, the top, my own Tapu Koko. It does intimidate both Halucha and it does intimidate um, Scizor, which again useful. But the problem is because it's so weak, um, it can't actually do anything against those Mons, even if it comes in. Like if it intimidates Halucha. It'll die on the it'll die on the switch, or if it intimidates Scizor, like it'll again it'll just die. It, um, either like the best thing he can do is hope to come in on like an SD, or not even on an SD on 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 a straight attack, so that it's, he's not coming in on an SD. That's the thing. Um, so Lando is slower than again Lando is slower than three of uh, four of my mons, and one of my mons has a priority that'll instantly kill him. Um, Lando should be allowed to die here. Lando should die, and it should go to Tapu Koko. Um, 
but he was trying to make sort of like a not necessarily like a hard read but he was trying to preserve he preserves the sack he preserves an electric immunity and at worst what he's going to take a hidden power ice on top of coco like that's his thought process right um but instead obviously i soul read him and his top of coco just fucking died um but if this dies instead and top of coco comes in um again i don't know for certain if it's choice if it's not you can just threaten guard chomp out like dude just click hp ice or whatever at that point uh, nothing that comes in wants to take a, uh, a stab thunderbolt or a stab bolt switch either. Um, obviously I do have a scissor, um, but at that point you can like, you can just click bolt switch, um, because, um, bullet punch won't kill. And more importantly, if I try and set up, you'll take no damage. Like, he should obviously like he should obviously understand he's very weak to set up scissor he doesn't have outside of i'm assuming kamo he probably doesn't have a fire attack on his entire entire team um he may have hp fire on top of coco but more than likely he all he probably just has flamethrower kamo um so he should understand right here that uh he's very weak to scissor if he wants to win he has to make sure that scissor doesn't get a free setup um the problem is again he got tilted he oops, don't put a turn um he lo loses his Kamo or his Tapu Koko right here and then he goes hard into Lucha because I guess like in his thought it's like well it deals it won't let Volcarona come in and set up obviously um it's faster than everything like the worst thing that could happen is I bring in my own Halucha and try and speed tie and in his mind, his thought is probably, like, if Scissor comes in, I can, you know, SD on whatever and survive because I have plus, plus one defense. Um, like, he was he was trying to sort of save the the, the Electric Seed Halucha. Um, like, he was trying to save his ability to, to get unburdened. Um, that was a mistake. Uh, I have a Tapu Koko as well. So anytime I bring in Tapu Koko, it's four turns that you can bring in your Halucha at some point and I'll still get your, your Unburden. Uh, but again, he's playing back foot. He's playing, um, he's playing on tilt. Again, I keep saying that, but he's, um, he's, he's sort of trying to tip the scales back in his own favor. And his thought is probably just like, I need this, this setup mon to, to you know, do something right away. Um, the problem is, again, he should have seen that doing that lets my scissor come in for free. Um, again, he, he maybe, like, he maybe should have just set up right there in front of that Garchomp. He probably should have just tried to set up SDs right there. Um, and hope that, you know, the plus one, minus one Dragon Claw won't do anything, even though I clicked Hidden Power Ice, or that Hidden Power Ice won't do enough. Um, he should have even just sort of hoped I switched, really. Like, maybe into hard into Rotom. Um, like, that like that was a mistake of a play, and it cost... It, essentially, it cost him the game. Um, like, that 1-2 sequence, the sequence of bringing in Tapu Koko and then bringing in Halucha, lost him the game. Um, and he made it very quickly. He didn't think it through. Um, and that's sort of the thing that happens when you're on tilt, is you sort of make rash plays without thinking it through well enough. Um, just to try and just to sort of try and like get yourself back in a winning position. Oh shoot! I just turned on the music on my phone too. Um, luckily, I'm pretty sure my phone's muted anyway. But um, yeah, like he he was trying to reestablish some level of control. Um, when what he should have done is slowed down and thought about like what what the best course of action from stopping me from winning is like rather than trying to figure out how he's going to regain control of the game he should have thought about how he's just stopping me from controlling the game um and he was so like th this is a thing that happens a lot with players when they're on tilt is rather than trying to set the scales back to even he's trying to tip it harder back into his his favor so that he can still win the game but it's still early in the game he should have been thinking more about what do I do 
what is the safest option I have that doesn't cause his win condition? That again, he should have realized that a mega scissor with with bullet punch just rips through his team. Like he should have been thinking, what do I do to just sort of not let that happen? What do I do to, you know, keep myself in a good position? Um, if this is SD drain punch, he should have SD'd and drain punched. I mean, he wouldn't have gotten a ton of HP back. Um, and in fact, he would have, like, he would have probably been at a lower amount of health than he is right now. But it would have forced me to bullet punch immediately. I couldn't let him drain punch my own scissor while I'm setting up, get back more health, dealing more damage, like anything like that. Like, uh, he was thinking, he wasn't thinking enough turns ahead. That was his main problem. Um, so, uh, that's sort of the entire purpose of this video. I didn't really want to um, show off the battle. Like I said, I could have just paused the, the battle and stopped it right then and there. This is a long video, I know. Um, but this is sort of like a, a, a 101 on, like, what, what to, like, how to, how to think when playing Pokemon. Um, I'm not, and, and the thing is, I'm not above getting tilted myself. Like, I'll get tilted and I'll make the wrong decision or I'll try and sort of, like, um, I'll, I'll pick a, an unsafe option just sort of hoping my opponent will screw up just to sort of give me, like, any advantage and things like that when I'm on back foot as well. I've done it before, although I, I try really hard not to. Um, but... This is sort of like the 101 of like what not to do when you're in when you're behind. Um, he should have seen his own weakness to this Pokemon, and he should have seen that he can't let it set up. I've I've done that before, by the way. Um, I I do that a lot. Like there's a lot of games that I've played where I realize that I'm particularly weak to a Pokemon, and I can't let it set up. Like I have to I have to always be in a position where it doesn't get a free turn and things like that. And it's led me to have to play it much more aggressively than I want to sometimes, but because I just sort of have to. And sometimes it doesn't work out, and sometimes I lose a Mon that I don't want to lose right away. But losing that Mon is still better than, like, letting something that will win just win. Um, one of my old teams, like, the old team that I used to play before this was incredibly weak to Volcarona. I didn't have a great, great way of dealing with Volcarona, especially if it got set up, and especially if it was a bulky setup. Um... Which is sort of why this team came about. Like, I have double... I have, I have Scarf, Tapakoku, and I have Halucha. Uh, Scarf with Brave Bird, mind you. Uh, but, um... Uh... Yeah, so the... But, like, I had plenty of games where, like, my opponent had a Volcarona, and... Um... Uh, every move I made was specifically just so Volcarona couldn't switch in. Like, that was it. I just needed Volcarona to not switch in. Um, and, again, that led me to have, like, I'd have to double aggressively. I'd have to, um, I, I sometimes had to not kill um, Pokemon when I could have taken a kill. Because when I would take that kill, it would mean Volcarona comes in and I lose. Like, you have to not only be thinking of your own win condition, you have to be thinking of what your opponent's win condition is. And what your opponent has, and how you can deal with it. Um, he did not do that. He got tilted. He let me set up scissor. Um, now again, he probably wasn't expecting to die to plus two bullet punch, but still, he shouldn't have allowed plus two bullet punch to happen at all. Um, even if, even if, uh, he didn't die to it. Even if he got to plus two and got a high jump kickoff and failed to kill me because I'm bulky scissor instead of this offensive scissor that kills him. Um, even if he w uh, was the scissor he was expecting uh, the, what happens then? Well, then his Halucha dies, and now he's out Lucha. Um, his only thing that can possibly deal really well with my Lucha. Um, and then he has to go either Kamoo and Flamethrower um, to kill it and take a huge hit on Kamoo, or he has to go to Magirna and take a huge hit on Magirna. So he's... No matter what, Halucha was not the play here because... Scissor is going to do what Scissor does, which is deal a lot of damage. He's going to lose Lucha, and he's going to he's going to lose a chunk on something else. Um, and then I would get gain initiative. I'd still have initiative there because even if Scissor dies, if he's in with Magirna, um, okay, well I have I have Volcarona, and I will set up in front of Magirna. Um, if Kamoo comes in and he flamethrowers, okay, well now I can go to. 
you know, I, I can go to my own Lucha or I can go to Top of Coco, um, force it out. Um, if he had gone to Gyarados, he couldn't set up because, well, I mean, he couldn't set up because he had to fear bug moves. Like, like he just, this was, and I feel like I'm really ragging on Grossifrap, <laughs> Gossip War, um, but he he played too quickly. He didn't think his move through, and he he was he went from being behind to losing. Like that's the thing. Be, you haven't lost when you're behind. You're just behind. You have you may have to make some plays or you may to like regain some sort of advantage, um, but you haven't lost when you're behind. You, but bringing in Lucha, bringing in Lucha caused him to lose, um, because he, he was never going to be able to regain momentum from this. Um, this is a very long video, I'm sorry, um, but it's just sort of like, these are the kind of things I think about when I play Pokemon and when I have games like this, and I try and, I try and keep this mentality more when I play as well, um. Gen 7 can be rough, though. Um, obviously, he's he's just... Like, his team in general is very bad against this Mon, and I just happen to have this Mon. Um, it's very hard to win in Gen 7 just because there are so many incredibly powerful, incredibly threatening Mons. Uh, like I said, my old team didn't have a good way of dealing with Volcarona. Um, even when I'm playing incredibly well, I still lose to Volcarona. Like, it doesn't, ha it doesn't change that. Um, even when I'm making the right plays, the aggressive doubles, even when I'm not killing things so Volcarona doesn't get free switches, even when I'm keeping rocks up. Sometimes still just lost to Volcarona anyway. There's nothing nothing I can do about it. Um, which sucks, but I mean that it, you you got to play with, you know, you got to play with what you got. Um, it kind of I'm kind of upset I decayed so much. Uh, I I was sort of hoping to get into the 1700s, now instead I'm fighting back into the 1600s but um yeah this this is just sort of like a something i think about a lot when i'm playing pokemon it's just sort of like i i need to calm down and i need to think these thoughts i need to think this way through i need to think about what my win condition is here um this is and i i hesitate to say this because it, it sounds very self-congratulatory but this is sort of what separates good players from average players um like a lot of average players just sort of like they won't they won't stop and think their plays through. Um, they they instead sort of um, like they, they'll make the prediction. Like he, obviously he was trying to make a prediction. He was trying to predict something with that top of Coco and it didn't work out. But he didn't stop to think what would happen if that prediction didn't work out. Um, in my mind, if, like, in my mind, I had no question that he was going going to Tapu Koko. Again, that's why I clicked EQ. But let's say that didn't work out, and my Garchomp died to Lando. Um, okay, well, that sucks. But uh, then at that point, my play is, well, Lando's in. Um, I go to Scissor. And Lando's at such low HP that, obviously, Scissor can kill it. Um, at that point, um, again, I, SD, uh, not die unless it's random HP fire, which who knows it could be. Um, even then I still wouldn't die. Um, and then I can bullet punch and then, um, I can at least hit something that comes in. Now at that point, his play, if I'm plus two scissor, that's low and weak, which is obviously go to Magirna, um, take the hit and just kill scissor because again, his team does not deal well with scissor. Um, but at that point now, my Scissor is dead. Uh, my Scissor and Garchomp are dead. His Lando is dead. My, his Magirna is weak. And I still have, he still has Tapu Koko. Like, that's all much better for him than the situation that he, like, he was in. Um, and he should have considered that. He should have considered, what if he thinks I'm going to Tapu Koko right now and click something insane? What if he clicks Earthquake? Or what if he tries to double or anything like that? He should have been considering those options, and he would have realized that, like, just staying in with Lando and risking it, way better than risking Tapu Koko. Um, I don't know. Anyway, uh, I've been rambling for too long. I'm sorry. Oh, shoot. I forgot I had this on, too. Jesus. 
Shoutouts to Hatsune Miku. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, skip to whatever the next song is. Hey, that's some good music. Um, yeah, sorry. Sorry this video is so long. Um, I don't know. I'm Quarantine is causing me to get really bored, and I want to talk about things like this. Um, and I don't have a lot of people to talk to about this with, unfortunately. Um, so I'm just throwing it out here into the void of YouTube. Um, but anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Uh, if you managed to make it all the way through here, uh, good job. Uh, join my Discord. The link will be in the description if you want to talk more about Pokemon. I'm going to... I just... I'm down. But anyway, until then, guys, thanks for watching. This has been Pink Reaper signing out.